Before we begin the story of the life of carbon, it is important to understand the structure of carbon. A carbon molecule is made up of six atoms and is able to form covalent bonds with other molecules due to its four electron outer shell. An example of this is carbon dioxide. It is also important to know that carbon can be found in four different macromolecules. The first macromolecule is the carbohydrate, composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Bread and its high glucose content are an example of carbohydrates. The second is lipids, also composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Lipids can be saturated or unsaturated depending on their fatty acid chains. This diagram shows an unsaturated lipid. Avocados are an example of lipids. The third is proteins, made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. All animal meats are an example of protein. The fourth and final macromolecule is nucleic acids, made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Nucleic acids make up most DNA, and ATP is an important one of them used in cellular respiration. Now we can begin the life of a carbon molecule. In this film, we will be starting at the site of an erupting volcano. As the volcano erupts, carbon enters the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide can now enter into the leaf of a plant, through the stomata, and into the chloroplasts. Now inside the chloroplasts, this carbon can be used in the process of photosynthesis to help power the light independent reaction known as the Calvin cycle. Carbon enters this cycle and exits as a part of the sugar known as glucose. Glucose is found in many foods, including this burger here. When we eat and digest this burger, our body is able to use its glucose to power the process of cellular respiration. The first step to cellular respiration is glycolysis, which converts glucose into two pyruvates and produces two ATP. The carbon then undergoes the bridge reactions and enters the Krebs cycle. It is important to note that the Krebs cycle occurs twice for every glucose or once for every pyruvate. Among the many things produced is carbon dioxide, which exits the cycle and is no longer needed for cellular respiration. The final step still needs to occur, however, known as the electron transport chain. The carbon dioxide that is released from the Krebs cycle leaves our body when we exhale and returns to the atmosphere. 